Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, I want to welcome you to another lecture in the basic level of Deliverance and Discipleship Institute. I pray that as we continue in this journey, that the Holy Spirit will speak to us and it will enlighten us in the name of Jesus Christ. So, this is another lecture and I want you to follow with all your spirit, soul and body. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. All right, let's move forward. Right At the last lecture, I told us that we are going to expatiate on what I call channels of operation for demons. There are some operations that demons do in the lives of people. And those operations, most of us believers and ministers, we have heard about them, but we don't understand much on them because there are not many books on deliverance. So I want to expatiate a little on those terms that are in channels of operation of demons or demonic spirits so that we can know them once we see it operating in the life of anyone and we know how to address it. Now, number one is demonic possession. The following is demonic oppression. And demonic obsession, demonic oppression, and demonization. Now, you can see that all these things, they are five. Now, under Jesus' view in deliver on deliverance, those, those are the two things we want to look at. We want to look at those five keywords. I want to use that. Look at the method Jesus used to cast out those devils. Now, I will explain all these five. And after that, we will go to the method Jesus used. When he was around, during his early ministry, the method he used to attack these conditions and how it got results in his times. All right. Deliverance and Christians. As I said earlier, there are two channels of demons, operations, and afflictions in mankind. I've told us before, but on this, on this lecture, I want to expand on it. There are two channels of demons, operation, and affliction in mankind. Number one is what I call the inward operation. Now, this inward operation of the devil has two channels. Now, what I mean by inward operation is that before these operations work, the demons must be inside of human being, must be inside of the human being before this kind of attack, this kind of affliction operates in mankind. Now, number one is demonic possession, and number two is demonization. Now, there's another one called outward operation. Now, this operation of the devil has three channels. Now, outward operation means that those demons are, they may not necessarily may be in your life or in your body before they operate. So, they can be outside. They can be, they can be near you. They can, be some, they can be inside of somebody. They can be in your clothes. They can be in your plate. They can be at your corridor. They can be anywhere and they will be doing their operation. So those operations are demonic oppression, demonic obsession, and demonic depressions. Now these three, demons can be anywhere and be doing these three to you. But the other, the first two I first mentioned, demonic possession and demonization, demons must be inside of you before they carry it out. Now, Explanation of the demons' channels of operations. Now, demonic oppression. Let me first explain that to you. Now, this happens outward when demons exact evil forces and powers on someone for evil occurrences and reactions. Now, what do I mean by this? D that demon, the demonic spirit that is afflicting the person or that may be afflicting you, may be outside. And that demon will be exacting evil forces and powers on you. For evil occurrences. Now, those demons may not necessarily be in you, but they will be outside and they will be carrying out their operations. Now, example, someone that is being present at night. Now, those spirits may be coming and going. They may be going 
I mean, they, they may be coming in at night, and after their operation, they will leave the room. So they just come into the room, exert their forces on the person, and they go. So somebody that used to have bad life experiences, rejections, a lot of problems like that, hatred, people just hate you. Now, there, there might be a spirit that is following the person around. So as another person, somebody that has, used to have regular failures, unexplainable attacks, there may be a power somewhere who has, that has vowed to attack the person with unexplainable attacks and with regular failures. So those demons, they may be out side before they operate they are not necessarily be inside of you before they walk before they perform their duty now demonic obsession this happens outside or oh, this an outward operation of the demon so those demons they are the one controlling their mind the thoughts the emotion of someone against his will and against the word of God. So that was what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Now, when you read your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, you will come across something very powerful. Something very, the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, those demons, they are the one that attacks through your mind. They control your mind, control your thought, control your emotion against the will of God and against the word of God. So those demons, they may not necessarily be in you. They may be outside and they will be, and they will be commanding results. Let's move forward. Now, demonic depression. Now, depression is an actual activity of demon to cause emotional breakdown, unhappiness, low morale, inability to envision the future, loss of hope. That's, that's sometimes due to dangerous acts, such as causing injury upon oneself and sometimes suicide. This operation is very common now in our days. There are times you will see somebody just, just trolling the streets. He's just, just very unhappy. Now, in fact, there are some people that since the, since the first day that you met them or that you know them, you have never seen them happy before. It is not their fault. It is, it is the work of demonic oppressing spirits. Now, these spirits, they are the one oppressing them. They are playing games with their emotion. So every time they'll be having emotional breakdown, every time they will be unhappy, every time they will be, their morale will be very low. So this kind of people needs deliverance. All those people that I've mentioned, they need deliverance, serious deliverance. Another one is what I call demonization. Now, demonization is an inward activity of demon. Now, demonization happens when demons are in you. Now, mean, they are in you means they could be inside your body organs, they could be in your blood. And most, most of the time, demons live inside the blood. Demon spirits, evil spirits, devils, they live inside the blood. So, demonization happens when demons live inside of you and they are operating they are causing havoc in your life and in your destiny or in the destiny of people so those people like that they need serious deliverance because demons are living inside of them you know, the spirit involved is right in the body of the victim performing different agenda of darkness example of those spirits are spirit of poverty it used to live inside the body inside the blood spirit of immorality spirit of profitless hard work spirit of late marriage spirit of failure Spirit of tragedy and many other spirits like that. So where, wherever that has demons inside of them in their blood, they are passing through this oppression of darkness called demonization. So they are demonized. They are demonized. Let's move forward. And the last one is demonic possession. Now this possession, this demonic possession is the highest form of demon oppression in a person. At this stage, the spirit of Satan owns the person completely. So when we meet, when we are talking about demonic possession, it, we mean that that person has demons in his, his or her human spirit. So the victim or the deliverance patient has demons in his or her spirit 
in a in his or her human spirit. So that is where the demons are living. So at that point, that person is not a Christian. When you hear somebody is possessed, it means the person is not a Christian. The person might have been a Christian before and renounced Christ or done something that made him or her to say no to Christ. And at that point, the demons will enter into the human spirit of the person So and the demons will be living there. So such people, they are not Christians. They are not Christians because the place where the Holy Spirit lives in the man is the human spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit lives in the man. Now, when these demons are now living there, it means the Holy Spirit is no longer there. And that means the person is possessed. So the person first needs to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Firstly, that's number one. And number two, the person has to pass through a serious deliverance ministration. So, and so... A Christian cannot be possessed. But all other initial four that I mentioned earlier, that I explained earlier, Christians, it can happen to Christians. Christian can pass through all those ones. Christian can be demonized. Christian can be depressed. Christian can be oppressed. Christian can, 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 can be afflicted. So, uh, so we need to get that clear. But demonic possession, it does not happen to Christian, except that Christian has renounced Christ. Let's move forward, brethren. Now, hence, a Christian cannot have the Holy Spirit and still be possessed with the devil at the same time. Note, all other channels and operations of the devil can be experienced by Christians if they don't undergo deliverance. That was what I was saying the other time. Let's move forward. Now, methods Jesus used to cast out devils. I established it in many times to us that in deliverance ministry, Jesus is our mother. I have told us this earlier in, 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 in our past lectures that Jesus is our model. So whatever we don't see Jesus doing, we, can, we must not do. Whatever Jesus does not command, we cannot do it and we must not do it as believers because Jesus is our commander. Jesus is our model. He's the one we are following. Is it everything that we see him did or commanded that we have to follow. So Jesus has his method, his method of casting out and ministering deliverance to people with demons. So we have three methods here that I have discovered in the Bible that Jesus used. And those three methods, they are very effective. And number one is Jesus used his word to cast out devils. Now, when you open your Bible to these Bible passages, you will see where Jesus used his word. Now, in today, what are we using to cast out devils? We stand on the word of God, we use the word of God, and we also use our own word, our word of command to cast out devils. So we use the word of God in our own language to cast out devils. So when demons, when devils hear God's word, authoritative word from our mouth they have no option than to live wherever they are hiding so and the lord will help us and grant us understanding of this in the name of jesus number two jesus used the method of laying on of hands to cast out devils now when you open your bible to the book of luke chapter 40 verses 40 and 41 so you will see how jesus used the principle and the method of laying on of hands so in hebrews 6 verse 2 bible talks about the doctrine of laying on of hands so to lay hands is not a sin. To lay hands is not a crime. But you must lay hands by God's instruction. If the Holy Spirit has not commanded you or led you or brought it upon you to lay hands, don't lay hands. The difference can happen without laying hands. So we need to get that clear. So, and number three, Jesus used the combination of the first two. He used both his word and he used laying on of hands. When you open your Bible, the book of Luke 13, verses 11 to 13 and verse 16, you will see that Jesus lay hands and he also used words and he got result. So if we can also use this method in deliverance, it is certain that we are going to get results. If Jesus did it and get results, we can do it and get results. And we shall get results. Mighty testimony shall follow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's move to the next slide. Now, how to undo demons' channels of operation? Now, I need to tell us this, brethren, that Satan is afflicting people every day. People find themselves in serious attacks every day. 
If you go out the streets and you begin to look at people, you see people under serious satanic oppression, depression, demonization, and possession. So we cannot afford to fold our hands and be looking at them getting destroyed. It is our fault as Christians, as believers, as ministers, to minister to these people, to minister to them, we have to reach out to people. Because the person you don't reach out to may later reach out to you demonically by afflicting you, afflicting your business, afflicting your child, afflicting your marriage, afflicting your finances, afflicting your anything and so concern you. So before they reach out to you, you have to reach out to them, minister to them, let them be free. That person that is possessed in your family, minister to the person, let the person be free. The Lord will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Now, in what operations? In what operations? So I'm talking about in what operations? I'm talking about demonic possession and demonization. Those are the hidden words. So this the best way to handle the inward operation of demons, such as demonic possession and demonization, as follows. Number one, you have to lead the person to Christ. I've said that earlier. Lead the person to Christ in altar call prayer or prayer of rededication. It is a must. We have to do that. Number two, lead the victim to break every associated covenant and causes. Connecting him or her to those demons, the demons inside of him or her, whether it, the ones inside the human spirit or the one inside the blood, the one in the body organs, covenants related and causes related must be broken through prayer warfare, through deliverance prayer points. As I have told us earlier, I have taught us how to formulate deliverance prayer points. So you know, we may need to visit that video, that lecture again, so that you can, uh, that you can. Uh, be reminded so and number three is that you cast out those demons cast out those after you have done the first two then you can cast out those demons i remember there was a time uh, one of our sisters uh she was manifesting demons and somebody called me I didn't. I didn't know that she was in that oppression. She, 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 she was in that condition that she, she was suffering from that problem. I didn't know. They just someone just called me said, "Prophet, uh, so, 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 sister is in this condition now." So I took my anointing oil and I went to her house. So I met some brethren there, busy doing the deliverance. I said, "What happened? What happened? What happened?" So, but from the deliverance experience, I knew that that sister was demonized. That sister was demonized. So, and this sister was a very strong spiritual sister. She's a choir, very gifted, very anointed, but demons are still inside her body. Until those demons were out, the sister didn't have peace. And we, we, we couldn't leave our house that day. We All of us had to sleep, sleep over in our house. Please, Let's minister to people. Let's show love in this dimension. And the Lord will grant us understanding and grant us the function to function appropriately in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's move forward to the outward operation. Now, outward operation, the easiest way to handle outward operation of demons, such as demonic oppression, demonic obsession, and depression, are as follows. Number one, the victim must forgive everyone he or she is keeping in mind. Listen to me. Demonic oppression, obsession, depression uh, will be possible when somebody keeps people in mind. You have some people that you are not greeting and you are vow never to greet again. Uh, it, it, if, if those people are the one behind your condition, you are giving them a legal grant. You are giving them are something called legal grant deliverance. Ega Grand is an avenue that connects somebody to an attack through an attacker. That's the definition of Lega Grand. So, so you have given them a Lega Grand to attack you. You must first forgive everyone. Forgive them and forget about it. Number two, you must confess every unrepented sin. Somebody that fornicated and has, ne has never confessed it. You committed adultery. You didn't. You didn't confess it, and you have not repented. See, those things are what devils 
will hold on to in your life to be oppressing you, to be obsessing you, to be depressing you. You have to confess them and repent. Number three, the victim must do fire sanitation of his or her environment against satanic presence. Now, it is possible that those, the, the demons oppressing, depressing, and obsessing you are in your environment. Every day you must, you must employ the principle of fire sanitization. You must sanitize your environment, sanitize your room, sanitize your office, sanitize your car, sanitize your, your, your clothes. So that when you sanitize them like that, wherever demons are hiding, they can flee. And so that you can have a free and a clean zone to live and to be. So another one is that it may involve the victim change of residence. It is possible that that victim or the deliverance patient is living in a place where there is an evil water. The person may need to change residence. And if the person is the one, the owner, of the house, then he has to consult a deliverance minister that is experienced in doing that, and that altar will be uprooted from the place. Or else, there may that it may involve the change of residence. Another one is break off every connection between the victim and the demons involved. Every connection between you. And the demons involved, that is the demons oppressing, oppressing, depressing you, you must break every connection between you. Whatever they are using to come into your life, whatever be the ladder they are climbing to your life, you must destroy them, break every connection that is binding you, and the Lord will give you understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, another one is cast out every contrary spirit from the victim. Now, contrary spirits, every spirit, that is the depressing spirit, the oppressing spirit, the, depre- the obsessing spirit, those spirits must be casted out. So if you are the minister, cast out those spirits from the person. And if you are the one in this condition, you are the one in this condition, cast out those spirits from yourself. And as you cast them, they will obey your command in the name of Jesus. Now, the last one is disciple the victim to grow spiritually when somebody grows spiritually demons won't be able to dominate him or her so after the deliverance ensure that you disciple that victim to grow to know the word of god to have the light of god's word and to be able to know his place in christ so when that is done the person will have a free zone life the, the life that is above demons a life that is without demon that's without attacks and the lord will give us understanding in the name of jesus christ all right let's call it a day here so for seed and for inquiries want to make inquiries probably about deliverance about the advanced course whatever and all you want to sow seed into the life of Prophet Ezekiel Lamileka, you can use this ab- ab- bank account details provided on this slide. So you can use it. Please don't mind the Muslim, the Muslim name on the bank name. The reason for that is that I am a Muslim convert and the name is still under the changing process. God bless you. Let's meet in the next lecture. God bless you.